Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let's look at 10 hidden functions of your Mac keyboard. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 750 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now I'm not going to really talk about keyboard shortcuts here which activate commands in the menu bar. I'm going to talk about some hidden keyboard combinations that you can use to perform functions on your Mac that you can't just see by looking at the characters on the keys. For instance you've got a delete key at the upper right hand corner of your keyboard and you can use that to delete the previous character. But if you hold the Fn key down and then press delete it actually will delete the character ahead of the cursor. On Windows this is called forward delete. So I can delete characters like that. Now if you have an extended keyboard, that's a keyboard with a numeric keypad on the right, you have page up and page down keys. And you can use those to jump forward an entire page or back an entire page. But most of us don't have those, especially if you have a MacBook. However, you still can do page up and page down. All you need to do is hold the Fn key and use the up and down arrows. Page down, page up. Likewise, an extended keyboard has a home and end key that will jump to the end of a document or web page or back to the beginning. You can do that as well by holding the Fn key and using the right and left arrows. Now I'm sure you already know that if you hold Control and Command down and press Space it brings up the Emoji and Special Character Viewer. Now what if you wanted to type the Apple logo? There's actually a character for that but if you search for Apple you don't come up with it. You find the Apple Emoji but not the Apple character for some reason. So the hidden keyboard combination for that is Shift, Option, and then the letter K. That types the Apple character and it's available in almost every font for the Mac. Now in Windows you have a right click which brings up a context menu showing you things you can do with whatever is selected. On a Mac you can do it with a mouse with a right click as well or on a trackpad by clicking with two fingers. But there's a way to do it using the keyboard with your mouse or trackpad as well. And This is the way I prefer. It's holding down the Control key and then just a regular click with your mouse or trackpad. That brings up the context menu anywhere. So here with a word and text edit if I control click on the desktop. If I'm in the Finder I can control click on a file or even control click on the toolbar at the top. Anything that you can bring up a context menu with you can use the control key on your keyboard with a regular click to bring it up. Now likewise the Option key will bring out hidden commands in the menu bar. So for instance if I click on File here I'll see the regular commands. But if I hold the Option key down I see I get some alternatives. For instance Duplicate here changes to Save As with the Option key held down. In the Finder if I look in the File menu here and I hold down the Option key I get a whole bunch of different commands. For instance Get Info changes to Show Inspector. Close Window changes to Close All. And even in the Go menu here a new menu command will appear. If I hold down the Option key you can see I have the opportunity to go to my Library folder. So what if you are in an environment like in Messages where if you type a line and press Return it submits the information. So if I type Hello and hit Return you can see it sends the message. So I type the first line. Instead of Return I do Option Return and you can see the message isn't sent. Yet I go to another line and now I can do Option Return for more lines or Return to send it. This works in lots of different situations where hitting a Return will send the message or complete the action. Using Option Return will instead add another line. For instance here in Numbers if I type something in a cell and hit Return it goes to the next line. But instead if I hit Option Return you can see I can add a second line. Now let's assume under System Preferences Keyboard you have Use F1, F2, etc. keys as standard function keys turned off. That means when I press the key with the volume up or volume down it will actually change the volume. So I can do volume up and volume down. But there are some hidden functions here. One is if you hold Option and Shift then it does it in small increments. Another is if you just use Shift it will go up in full increments but it will give you a little sound indicator each time. And if you hold down the Option key and hit Volume Up or Volume Down it will launch System Preferences and take you right to the sound controls. Now what about the Caps Lock key? If you ever accidentally hit the Caps Lock key and then find out you're shouting in all caps when sending a message or an email well you can disable the Caps Lock key or reassign it to something else. Go into System Preferences and then to Keyboard and then look for the button that says Modifier Keys. Select that and you can see the first one is Caps Lock and you could reassign Caps Lock to be another Control, Option, 
Command or Escape key or it simply set it to No Action. So hitting the Caps Lock key does nothing and you won't make that mistake again. And here's another hidden function of your keyboard. If you hold down a key you can use that for accent marks. So for instance I could start typing a word like this and instead of just typing E I hold down E and wait for the alternatives to appear at the top and then I just tap the number of the correct one. So for instance I could tap 2 and I get Cafe with an accent mark. Now here's a bonus one and I've saved the best for last. Wouldn't it be nice to use the modifier keys on the other side of the keyboard for something different. For instance I always seem to hit Shift or Command or Option or Control on the left side of the keyboard. Never on the right. So those keys are unused for me. You can actually assign those other keys to something else. But you won't find that in System Preferences Keyboard. Instead look in System Preferences Mission Control and you'll see these shortcuts here for Mission Control. If I look at those I can actually assign Mission Control shortcuts like bringing up Mission Control to one of the two Shift keys or Control keys or Option keys or Command keys. So I can use that unused modifier key for activating Mission Control, going to the application windows in Mission Control, or showing the desktop. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.